Hi all, so today I thought something different, um, more philosophical and um, historical, methodologically meant than the usual. Um, and um, it's, uh, it's about the concept of decadence in history. I wa originally wanted to make um, <coughs> a video about the, you know, um, certain introductive aspects to the Middle Ages and this idea of um, decadence of an antique world um, through which we usually introduce uh, medieval history. And I, um, and I came across um, the idea of decadence uh, in itself, you know, the, the philosophical concept that stood uh, in historiography as well as, you know, the, the history of thought, especially in our, in our Western historiography that <coughs> is the one which uh, definitely has influenced the world the most compared to, to, to all the others. And, um, and I think it's very interesting essentially for the influence that the concept of decadence uh, independently from, you know, talking about the, the ancient world now, ab about talking about um, the, interpreta the interpretation of history itself has uh, still so much influence in our minds um, and how we still interpret uh, history and the, the historical decadences mostly from an ideological way. And I wanted to investigate a little this process um, um, very, very generally, I don't, I don't pretend to enter into the minutiae of historiography, etc. For telling the truth, they're not minutiae at all. <laughs> they're very big topics. But uh, uh, let let's um, let uh, it be. Um, uh, let's let it be um, uh, a general reflection. A general reflection that I believe should bring us to Romanticism, because I believe that's the origin, the moment in which um, the concept of decadence was really firmly impressed in our uh, Western mindset. Um, so, re relatively to, I, to our times, is is an old concept, but at the same time, it's very um, uh, it's very close in history and and therefore it's all the more interesting because uh, it's often between us and most of the historical decadences that we we conceive um, starting for instance from the one of the Western world or or even other <coughs> uh, other uh, entities during modern age you know considering the rise of the modern state etc. Um, and there are, and this is not just uh, related to strictly, you know, uh, like, um, like, um, um, you know, in lay environment, let's say, but also to, you know, uh, uh, religious beliefs. You know, the, the, there surely uh, has been a very harsh debate throughout throughout the um, the centuries <coughs> between, for instance, Catholic and Protestant historiography is about considering, you know, the, the decadence of the primacy of Rome in the um, religious, you know, uh, landscape of Europe um, after the reform and uh, all the uh, counter reaction with the uh, you know, reform and and. And therefore, you see that this can be extended um, very broadly. And uh, there are many people I see um, uh, today that uh, perhaps m that, that make up the majority of um, uh, of our world, especially in the West, who conceive Western culture to be uh, in decadence, in decay, in, in some measure. So it, the concept of decadence is something that that permeates our our mindset at the point of uh, considering it as a sort of uh, you know the one of rise and decadence a sort of dichotomy uh, from which we cannot separate when thinking about history. Um, and um, why did romanticism really occur? You know, with the idea of decadence. Well, uh, first of all, there have been many romanticisms. Uh, so every um, national, especially romanticism. Um, had a bit the story of his own. If you take 
uh, German and Italian Romanticism, for instance, those were uh, Romanticisms that strongly uh, felt this idea of decadence be because they respectively saw their own countries as uh, not united, no, uh, let's say, uh, not uh, at the full potential of their opportunities, and therefore they 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 felt the idea of decadence as um, you know um, as a path uh, at the end of which they they had come, or at the darkest point of which they had come in certain measure. Um, so, um, uh, however, I believe that uh, romanticism in itself. Um, so um, uh, decadence also in other terms um, and uh, relatively to the attra attraction also towards um, certain decadent cultures that were conceived at that time uh, for instance the so-called eastern one you know that uh, that so many fantasies had arose at a certain point. I mean, the idea of a of an exotic East that had decayed, but was um, you know as a civilization from the ancient world compared to to 19th century Western world, um, and that however were still uh, so full of, char of charm and of uh, attractiveness. But also a very important influence that played on Romanticism, and that however is of uh, a drastic different origin because it comes from a scientific one was Darwinism or better um, <coughs> the, um, the wrong interpretation of Darwinism that was essentially given immediately to, to, to mm, the theory uh, uh, by, um <coughs> by I believe the largest part of, of the population at that time. As, you, as we know, the theory of the evolution at the time uh, Darwin presented it was, um, was ridiculized by people for obvious reason, reaction to especially um, <coughs> um, religious dogma yes, and etc. Et um, but also for the simple idea that maybe someone would find ridiculous that, that that um, <coughs> humans <laughs> can descend from 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 apes, except the fact that we are technically apes <coughs> still today. So, um, and 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 I believe I I'm I'm very much in love with the history of Darwinism because uh, it 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 in it tells you it's a very bright example in history of how you know a new theory a new idea is uh, uh, instrumentalized by by others and. Uh, even you know um, unconsciously some way or maybe just because um, uh, people don't fully understand the theory or they find it too, too strange and therefore they, they try to give different uh, exceptions and meanings to it this is something that happens still today there are uh, especially in philosophy or in social movements certain terms that are drastically um, you know modified from uh, if anything, from their etymological meaning, because I believe that when you 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 study you know movement, all those words that end in ism, um, you should always um, um, track the, the the etymological meaning before talking about them and trying to see how you know from that meaning eventually the movement and the theories uh, eventually shifted and, to and towards s certain directions and why because those are very good indicators of you know of of, of what society thinks at a, s uh, at a given time and, uh, and and darwinism was highly misunderstood because contrarily wise to what it is supposed to be um <laughs> it was conceived as a sort of um of determinism um obviously darwinism uh you know spread uh very uh, very rapidly especially in those social um not just in the natural sciences but uh, as well in the social ones and therefore even history and the uh its um evolutionary doctrine essentially um privileged um seemingly um at least from a mythological point of view the um the moment of the origins meaning that um the great question from from that perspective was you know then where did the thing start i mean people at that time were even questioning there had been 
an evolution. Now we know that uh, the life on Earth exists from uh, <laughs> a, a great amount of time. People, especially usually on on uh, religious base, believe that I don't know even the same uh, planet Earth and the universe would be uh, um, um, a couple, uh, some, some, uh, not more than some millennia old. Uh, so, um, um, for the society of the time, um, Darwinism posed mostly a problem of the origins, while. Darwinism <coughs> basically tells us uh, it's a very neutral scientific theory, as every scientific theory should be, and it basically tells us that uh, there is a functioning, you know, th there is a functionment through which, you know, uh, species evolve. Um, and the, r the problem here is that if you look even today how, how people, um, you know, conceive the idea of evolution, um, you know, um, they they tend to give it a sort of teleological meaning. You know, the idea that the evolution can happen for some certain random causes or me mechanicistic ones, but that especially there is um, um, there is a an, e an an end. You know, there is a direction, a point, a fixed point towards that is gonna uh, evolve. As a matter of fact. And um, and therefore, um, this attracted, especially in the idea of history, you know, the idea that, uh, in thinking about history, the idea that um, history was meant to go towards a certain direction. This is not something new, this is not something, um, you know, um, new at all, because it basically was introduced by uh, the Christian uh, mindset, uh, the Christian culture, the idea that there is going to be an end. There was a beginning of the universe, then there is going to be a judgment's day, and therefore time is linear. Uh, in most cultures before Christianity, uh, time was meant as a cyclical um, you know, path um, and uh, as a constant re uh, regeneration from and 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 part of a uh, an infinite cir circle that basically never ended. So in Western in Western world in the 19th century, Darwinism was already talking to people who reasoned as if you know there was a beginning and an end. So um, a start and a journey that necessarily had to go towards not just a di direction but one single direction. Um, and um, and and one of the worst um, uh, you know aspects of the misinterpretation of Darwinism ca came from the fact that this evolution was uh, was conceived to be in a deterministic way uh, because um, you know until you know uh, Christianity stopped to to the religious idea but Darwinism was basically giving um, uh, a scientific backing to the idea that also. So societies evolved in a scientifically, uh, you know, expectable way. Uh, this is also the century of positivism. So there was a, a huge fate of mankind. At this point, even beyond um, Christian religion, and this was criticized by Christians at that time. Think about, um, uh, for instance, uh, the thought of Nietzsche, or you know, this idea that. Uh, uh, people had d d that the Western world had reached such uh, an advanced uh, development of uh, of technology and 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 of, of social progress. This is what the world they used the idea of, of a progressive path of history that that people could do without even without God. Um, and um, and you can understand how this uh, this tells you how controversial and fascinating at the same time the, the 19th century was because this reflects really the brutal acceleration of um, given by industrial revolution to Western society and how you know this, the, there was this huge um, cauldron um, uh, of uh, you know in, in ferment that um, uh, that was a Western society Western um, the Western world at that time, and and therefore uh, this mindset took Darwinism, uh, basically expoliated it from any you know <laughs> purely scientific meaning for which it was considered, and it was um, brandished 
um, ideologically speaking, to say what? To say that um, certain um, societies or cultures even um, basically uh, evolve towards, first of all, w uh, a certain direction, and that, that that this direction is conceived as um, unique because there is a sort of scale that of progress of stages of of progress that uh, through which you could measure the uh, the development of civilization, and it's not surprised that Darwinism was was used in this sense very uh, which is very sad and th this was not the intention of Darwin. Uh, to be used by racists, um, to by racism to basically give um, you know touch of scientific truth uh, to uh, to the racist theories for which you know um, the idea was that there was a society that was more developed than another because it had to be so because the, the people who made it up were superior to 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 other. Um, people that lived in other civilization that s that that were less developed, and therefore um, this, uh, which is a very stupid thing indeed, that obviously today we don't we don't um, see anymore in our historiography. Not just because um, a racism uh, is obviously devoid of any scienti scientific ground, but also and especially. Um, or probably more convincingly uh, today, because we see that um, there is no um, classificatory and categorical, um, you know, way to to describe a society. Categorization, telling the truth, came from um, it came from the encyclopédie. It came from the the. The, the many of, <laughs> of, of of classification that the Enlightenment had, because also the Enlightenment eventually would be um, distorted, and you know, uh, and I it's weird how s society sometimes takes always the worst of a certain theory, at least always understands it the wor the, the bad way. Um, and uh, probably because theories are m way more intelligent <laughs> than, than the mass of the people. Um, but I don't want to be so <laughs> categorical myself. Um, and, and therefore, uh, the concept of evolution passed uh, into history by showing essentially that there were certain cultures or civilizations, as you want to call them, that were um, essentially uh, compared, to or if, if not equated, to um, to the species of Darwinism. Meaning that I don't know the the, the Roman Empire. It is the the major the major example here was mm, conceived to have been uh, a sort of uh, organism uh, as a biological organism that. Uh, had made its time and had it had to finish and therefore we can establish that at a certain point the Roman Empire ends and the worst about it is that <laughs> it was justified from an ideological perspective the ideological perspective that there was in fact a decadence now how it is uh, how was really in turn this decadence justified um, it was justified by the fact that um, Decadence would be seen as a sort of negative, um, not as a decay, but as a decadence, in fact, as something that is caused by someone for certain intrinsic faults or vices or um, corruption that at a certain point uh, is meant even like a moral one. Um, that basically makes these great organisms and, and others uh, more rampant, uh, younger, uh, on the rise. Um, this is obviously a theory that, and a way of reasoning that we, we don't conceive anymore, even though I still find many people, mm, telling the truth, who, who believe that um, there is a, a matter of timing in how things uh, have a start and end. Well, yeah, that you can't say that. Um, Obviously, but uh, because we live in time, in anything, if you believe that time exists, at least historically speaking, um, 
but um, but it's meant to be as if it was a lifetime o o of an animal. <laughs> sometimes um, people believe, in fact, that you know if if something uh, that there are rules that can predict in a certain sense the, the even the time and, and even the stages in which a certain empire grows and collapses and these are ideas that come straight from from uh, the 19th century and today we don't believe them anymore because we see um, the social phenomena as something extremely much more complicated paradoxically than um <coughs> Than uh, evolutionary, um, uh, you know, than evolutionary um, processes occurring to nature, which are in fact much more simple, while societies um, imply uh, a completely different plan in which certain things happen. Um, that um, is subject still today, in fact, uh, differently from the theory of the evolution to a great deal of debate. Not that the theory of evolution is not debated, but as, uh, at least we 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 take it as uh, you know uh, you know in the scientific community as the uh, most uh, you know fitting explanation that we can give to to the uh, development of 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 life and of species in this um <coughs> in this uh, in this world. Um, so uh, the idea of the phases of decadence of a civilization was something that came straight from there, and from which uh, we can't uh, seem to to <laughs> to to depart. Um, and uh, and and as I was saying before, um, uh, this idea implies um, the concept that. Um, uh there is a sort of frivolity or softness um and of um um and corruption and of crisis and the destruction of reason mm. uh, a, a feeling that mm, seems like more than one of a sens a sensual abandonment rather than um a social you know uh, social explanation um and and this was the pattern and the frame through which uh, history was read was began to be read at the time so um, um quite fashionable at the time were for, for instance these a revocation historical revocation of the decadence from the hellenistic kingdoms the uh, the ones that succeeded uh, alexander the great through this uh, low empire, you know, this this idea of the late empire. Um, I mean, talking about the the, um, and the Roman Empire history uh, that preluded to this other concept, historiographical concept of the Byzantine age. I mean, the idea that at a certain point the Roman Empire was not Roman at the point that they had to call it another way. And they had to call it Byzantine because uh, just the capital wasn't anymore in Constantinople and uh, the western... Uh, um, it was in Constantinople and the western uh, regions with Rome uh, at a point were, uh, were lost. Uh, but this was applied, as I was recalling at the beginning, even for religious uh, topics, thinking about um, papal Rome and uh, the, the, the rise and fall of the papal monarchy or the black legend of Spain during the Baroque age, you know, this rise of Spain in the 16th century and its fall in, uh, in the following one. So um, all these theories that, that stressed the idea that there was something moral rather than highly complicated social and economic, political, social and economical, um, um, that caused uh, the, the end of an empire. In, in, in to make long uh, to, mean, to make the long story short, you know, um, empires decay because people who, who rule them are uh, corrupt, inept, both from uh, a political and moral point of view. <coughs> so think about, uh, and y you you could find that at, uh, at the end of the 19th, at the beginning of of uh, the 20th century, in uh, poets and men of letters such as Baudelaire or or D'Annunzio, 
um, um, it, there is even an age and uh, you know uh, and uh, you know period in, in 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 art and literature called in fact decadentism, as you know. Um, and therefore, and even though at that point the the whole thing started assuming another phase because it wasn't much. Um, you know, the idea of, of, of a past world that was being interpreted in that way from a strongly pure, um, a strongly conceived uh, moral point of view. But it was rather a self-critics to um, Western society uh, after this big rise of the 19th century that at the beginning of the 20th century instead was uh, uh, with, with World War and other um and other uh, events um was essentially mm, perceived as decadent because uh you know all the expectation of positivism and mm, the fate in progress etc had been uh essentially uh, crucified over the uh the 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 trenches of world war the first and there's and therefore this great Western world essentially being capable only of destroying itself and obviously this is also a, an exaggeration it wasn't really like that um, but just for saying how um, um, the world Western society at a point and consequently um, historiography was strongly permeated with this idea of moral death and and corruption that was felt as the main cause of all the evils of the world um and um uh, and and it's and it's the reason why you find uh that uh works even written earlier than that like in the 18th century and i'm talking about the one of edward gibbon about the the decadence and the decay and the fall especially of the roman empire um were still so much into vogue and and, there and I'm sometimes disturbed to see that that there are people still today who essentially read uh Roman history like in this example through the lenses of uh Gibbon's rise and fall of the Roman Empire that it's <laughs> it's a book that has been written in the eighteenth century folks uh historiography has made a bit of a progress from there and yet there is this moral uh cons you know conception and that that still make people wanting to believe that at a certain point the, the Roman Empire or any other empire that has fallen um did so because it was corrupted because there weren't the tough uh heroic guys of the first hour and um uh, and uh and that everything uh died with them um <coughs> unfortunately these are theories that uh, really do not stand on their feet um uh, we um we know that uh i mean today we we went um a, f a far a far uh way ahead than that we know essentially that societies um as a world first of all we uh, consider that 19th century had produced and this is also important the idea of uh, of nation state the idea that um uh, amp that, that was eventually applied um um uh, ideologically to um the um even to the rest of history basically it was um felt like empires that were uh, that maybe had a national core at a point, but that be eventually became quite multi-ethnic, uh, essentially had fallen for this very reason, for the fact that they weren't of one uh, single uh, race, and that uh, therefore the m multicultural uh, model eventually brought to decadence, especially when it was something that imported models from the East. Think about the Roman Empire. This was the core idea. Um, and... Um, and and it's done a lot of harm also for another reason that is conceiving um empires and other entities um um as essentially um the nation state from a political and administrative point of view of the 19th century as if i don't know the roman empire was a point uh, was a wa was a block uh where in inside everyone was in, in a certain kind of uh, you know belief or of culture of um <coughs> uh, 
uh, you know, of uh, even of an administration, uh, administrative system, etc. And and from the other side was something different, something uh, something that had a very um, compact form uh, in its turn, like. There were the Germanic tribes who were conceived like, you know, the, the, the 19th century uh, national uh, Germans, at least ideologically meant, uh, meant uh, propagandistically meant, um, and who eventually uh, took, uh, took over the Romans because the Germans were superior to them and the Romans had corrupted and now the Germans had to kick in all this stuff. Um, today instead we have a much more fluid uh, idea of, of social systems, even when they are effectively uh, comprehended within a political one. Today we know that, uh, you know, uh, uh, an, or, uh, um, you know uh, an organization like the one of the Roman Empire was extremely uh, buried within its borders. Um, there, was a cent there wasn't a centralized um, state that decided every single thing that happened in all the provinces. Um, there wasn't a single direction. There weren't even the means and the tools to uh, to, to think a modern strategic um, management of all the world resources of this empire. Also because, you know, the political system prevented that even from happening considering that the, the, the Roman emperors uh, on average lived a very short time so they wouldn't even have time to, to carry out um, a policy uh, on a more than, than on a certain scale. So lots of problems that um, make us um, and um, you know past civilizations and even our own today as something uh, much less categorical and much more fluid and dynamic and in constant movement uh, than, um, than, than we automatically like to think. This is what social sciences show us uh, very clearly. And in fact, we, arri we arrived at the point in history in which we don't even understand how our own societies work. And if it is a very tough task to do it for past societies, uh, about which, yes, we, we know a few, but at, at least we can work on that few by finishing to, 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 to see that few and expressing a judgment. With our own society, you know, it, it's something so big and, and, and diverse and, and, and fast-moving that we're at the point that, that we have a very few control on what pol is politically happening. Um, and a very few understanding of, of the functioning of our society is proper. So, um, regarding the idea of decadence, it's very, very difficult to even understand whether we are in a moment of crisis. Mm. Crisis is a much better world, even though the word decay rather than decadence is, is quite interesting, because indeed um, societies, maybe not just like um, uh, beings in, in nature, like certain Darwinist um, inspired <laughs> historians would like to to think um, live in a, in a condition of uh, continuous um, um, competition. You know, it's a very ferocious one. Look at about uh, international. Uh, look at uh, international politics nowadays. You know, you can sense this idea that uh, there are new. Uh, powers on the rise that there are um, that there is a certain sense um, in a certain sense instability and uncertainty growing that there is a system that has uh, always more variables and these variables can equate um, uh, to to scenarios that are very different one from others from which certain political entities can rise and fall as a matter of fact from the uh, the the you know in terms of uh, you know mm, uh, social indicators and power economical uh, military power etc. Um, and um, and this brings us to 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 come closer to the idea of decay to the idea that you know there is a top and a bottom in in, in broadly meant uh, <laughs> um, and that um, 
we we have even that it's even difficult to to understand at which point we are or towards which direction we are heading but at the same time i believe that moments like these are are much more useful to make us um forget about the idea of decadence because th you see th the idea of decadence um especially towards someone else that uh, that is far away to you in in time or in space or both is something easier you can't say uh like a modern man ah oh yeah the romans fell uh, their their empire failed there were a bunch of idiots because they didn't know how to manage things now if i had been there in charge everything would would be fine you you find this you find this on youtube on comments <laughs> about historical videos yeah if if only those guys had done that well have you ever ever thought that maybe those guys knew much better the world they, they were living in than you do uh well and i think that such attitudes um come mostly from um from those societies that are on the rise because everything seems smooth yeah there are problems but everything is on the rise so uh we must have deserved this in a certain place let's start criticizing others because they're they're down below and we are up here so we feel so so good and and cool because we are at the top and he said when especially when you have been at the top and and you start falling down you start decaying uh you start finding other reasons other justifications for that and you start understanding that this dichotomy superior um i mean advanced superior and backwards inferior uh is bullshit essentially and that there are other uh, other other reasons other motivations for this that are very much complex and that will let you start thinking the worst are those who were at, uh um bl that have always been below and and uh, 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 at a certain time uh rise suddenly to the top well those are the worst because th those w uh, those are the ones who have always eaten the dust and and they they have hated and and loathed and etc and now that they get to the top and say aha yeah now we are the ones at the top and you are the, the dirty dogs etc uh and those wo will not understand at least uh, until it won't be their time <laughs> for decadence um and um and therefore i believe that moments of crisis are the moments in which people are able to to be more subtle to be more objective to especially because they see why you know there is a certain decay because they leave it on their skins and therefore they are able to identify that sometimes um there is a moment of decay uh, also that is also um uh, interpreted in in negative ways like i don't know uh you know the moment of decay for instance is um it's very pretty much used by populistic movements and i don't want to give any strictly political color to those because mm, um populism is mm, from both sides of the the barricade you can be a uh a, 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 um a progr um a liberal you you can be a conservative but there is always a share of populism that has nothing to do with the the color of the idea that you have but rather with your degree of of intelligence and obviously mm, um in, in in times of crisis sometimes there are people who who uh who, who exploit crisis to say ah uh, to 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 accuse someone or something of being responsible for this crisis at, at, uh, although those are not the responsibles um there are countless episodes of this in history but uh unless the political <laughs> path doesn't take a wrong turn like you know I mean a totalitarianism where at a certain point uh, people's minds are controlled etc i believe that in the free world such um accusations eventually mm, um die out and they are paradoxically even even useful because they um 
they are the uh, or if not useful at least they're s positive in some kind because they they are they show that there are s that there is certain attrition from which eventually the you know the, the the losing point will will eventually die out because you can't perpetrate a lie um more than much in a, in a country when there is where there is a free press when there is freedom of, of speech etc so uh, it's a way to grow as well and we are lucky to live in societies like these um around the world it's not always the case and around the world you you understand that for instance the the ideas of decadence and of of moral decadence attached to them um, especially probably populistic thoughts, think about when the Soviet Union collapsed, all the, 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 the myths that have been created in, in certain ways, and who was responsible, etc. You understand that where there is poverty, where there is political, you know, relative political freedom, um, things uh, really tend, uh, ideas really tend to orientate towards this a romantic idea of decadence, of moral corruption, etc., as the 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 explanation for crisis and decay. Instead, in more progress society, <laughs> I'm using a positivistic term. I shouldn't be saying that. But let's say in more developed societies, or at least those who have better standards of living, um, that instead is uh, moments of crisis are taken as a way to to reflect and to draw new conclusions and this is simply because there are enough resources to do that uh, otherwise also you know very developed societies can crumble and and get and, and, and get lower and uh, at a point that they can even lose what what they had achieved in the past but these answers to 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 uh, um, rules and laws that have really have really nothing to do with <sighs> with morality, I think, uh, which which is very bitter to say, because um, I believe to be a, a quite ethical person, or at least I give a great importance to ethics, and I don't pretend my ethics is superior to anyone's, but I just think that um, it's very important uh, to choose, um, and to make a choice, to take a stand. Doesn't matter if it's, if it's right or wrong, because you know you can't debate whether something is right or wrong. Um, nobody has the truth. This is also what I believe. Um, but I, I reevaluated during the years the importance of people's decisions into the systems, uh, into social systems, political systems, etc. But um, I, I still believe that no matter how you know. Um, uh, how how much moral um, how moral a society is um, there are certain dynamics that that are gonna go uh, their own way independently from from ethical choices ethical choices can really make the difference many times but it's not all um, especially our societies today uh, have reached uh, such a, a high um, level of development that it's as if they moved on their own, which is quite um, uh, dangerous uh, that economy moves by itself. Today we have uh, machines that essentially are able to um, to tell us, you know, what the world markets will evolve like in a, in a short uh, in, in a few years, uh, something that not even um, economical analysts can 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 do, and uh, and how will uh, markets work in those in uh, on these um, uh, artificial intelligences? And this is taking over um, the whole you know the whole social spectrum, and 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 we don't even know these things, um, and um, and therefore it's quite dangerous because. Uh, we are not aware of what is happening in our society. We we are kind of losing control of it. We have always uh, we have increasingly better life conditions, but at the same time, from a political point of view, we have always less power, which is a very fascinating paradox. And I'm I'm generally optimistic about the human um, the human advancement, but. Uh, 
as a historian, I, I realized that um, it's not a matter of being optimistic or pessimistic. Certain things will, will mm, find their way uh, independently from what people choose. And, um, and it's better to understand how these things work in order to be able to counter them if, th if they're going to make us take a wrong turn uh, at a certain point and to operate on the base of, of these in order to prevent etc. This happens at every level so there are big dynamics, smaller ones but they all concur in the end at uh, shaping our societies. So, wow, um, this was a bit of a rant, <laughs> more than anything, but I, I, I hope you found it interesting in some part. Um, so I, um, I thank you for listening, and as always, uh, if you like uh, my video, please um, uh, share it or leave a like or subscribe to my channel, or uh, if you want to comment, uh, just leave a comment or or write, uh, send me an email and I will try to answer even with a dedicated video if I have the time. So I thank you very much for listening. Uh, I wish you a nice time and see you next time. Bye!